Wowie, welcome back. It's Terrific Tuesday, and it gets more terrific by the minute. Special guest joins me in studio. The guy just comes barging right in the studio. He's like, all right, I'm on the next segment. That's it. Vito Fasella's with me, former congressman from Staten Island, New York, and uh, thanks for coming down. Buddy, no, always a I appreciate Thanks it. for the invitation. Um, we for have, opening the door. <laughs> yeah, we, we gave him the code. Um, we have a constitutional attorney and a law professor, Jonathan Adler, coming on talk a little later to talk about the 25th Amendment and constitutional crisis I think we're facing. I'm glad you came down to help me with that. But uh, right now, great friend of the show. We have him on every week um, to give us a little update on what's going on with him. But... Uh, Former decorated NYPD veteran um, Bill Pepitone joins us right now. He's also a candidate for New York City mayor. And, uh, Bill, thanks for joining uh, Vito and I today on this uh, terrific Tuesday. How are you, buddy? Very good. Thank you, gentlemen. Pleasure to be here. Good to so, uh, Bill, give me, um, if you could, you know, this all this law enforcement stuff, uh, down in the Capitol, the FBI has put out this MAGA most wanted list, and um, I'm just kind of harkening back to the, the summer of love when, you know, they were occupying City Hall and they were looting New York City. Um, wasn't the police department here given a whole different tack dealing with protesters? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, it's a failure of leadership across the board, whether it was in Washington, D.C., or New York City last summer. The police are told to stand down and they're put in unwinnable positions and it endangers everybody. It endangers the police officers, it endangers the civilians. Uh, the lack of leadership is astounding and why this keeps happening, I have no idea. Yeah, there's kind of like, Vito, we talked about this, it's like a double standard out there, like the hypocrisy is crazy. You know, peaceful, mostly peaceful protests were good, they were saying. Yeah, I think in practice there seems to be a double standard, but at a minimum the perception among too many people is there's a double standard. And that's a problem, not just for uh, New York City, but I think the rest of the country. If we really want to bring people together, people like a fair, uh, honest set of rules that applies to everybody equally, and at least at a minimum it doesn't appear that that's the case uh bill i mean it seems there's evidence coming out now that the uh fbi actually reached out to capitol hill police and said that they thought they had some threat intelligence that and asked them if they needed help if they needed help from the national guard or anything like that and it turns out that they turned down that help I would think that Capitol Hill police are quite prepared for protests. There's like over a thousand protests a year in Washington. You would think they would be prepared. Uh, what exactly happened, I guess we'll find out. You know, Commissioner Bratton was on the radio yesterday and he made a very important statement. He said in policing, the first story is never the last story. So we've got a way to go to find out exactly what really happened here. But the bottom line is, I mean, just looking at it from an outside observer, there weren't enough police there. There weren't enough, there wasn't enough leadership. They didn't give them the right instructions. They looked confused. They were overwhelmed. People got hurt and people got killed because of it. And in the same token, it's like there was this weird, there was this weird thing where, you know, in one part of the Capitol, you know, people would, literally got killed. And then you see these other pictures of people kind of strolling in, like sashaying through, taking photos and videos, there's some videos emerging of people taking pictures with the Capitol Hill police. You know, you did, know what I mean? It's yeah, like, I saw those videos, and, and they're astounding. I mean, some areas you have police officers fighting for their lives against these large crowds being dragged down the stairs, being hit with, with fire extinguishers. And in other videos, you have police officers standing to the side while protesters just walk past them. So again, we have to find out what exactly happened, who made these calls, who authorized them to enter the Capitol, we have to find out who was in charge and who failed. Yeah, it sure seems like a failure to me, you know, you know and no, unfortunately sorry, I, people are said dead, before that the, Capitol, the Capitol Hill police guys that I've dealt with over the years are tremendous men and women, and they have the balance of, you know, you're not, it's not traditional law enforcement, you know, I, I take that back. They have the responsibility of, of enforcing the law on Capitol Hill, but they also, you know, with the thousands and th tens of thousands of people who come to Capitol every day, are walking through citizens. So it's a fine balance. And to John's point earlier, there are always demonstrations. But what happened last week was just horrible, was wrong. Uh, unfortunately, people lost their life. 
Uh, and I think, Bill, what you said earlier is we have a tendency to sort of analyze a situation, law enforcement in particular, and say, okay, we know what happened, when in fact we don't know all what happened, other than the obvious, when the, the storming, which was wrong. But I think it's, it's in all our interest to get to the bottom of truly what happened, so why? So, we, so it doesn't happen again. And Absolutely. Bill, I, I was doing some research on this. It seems like the law enforcement officers in the D.C. metro area, there's like, it's like this fragment, you know, you got the Capitol Hill police, you got D.C. metro police, you got, you know, some Virginia Commonwealth kind of mixing in there around park the edges, police. the park police, you got the Secret Service, it's like, Sounds seems like there's a lot of. Uh, I mean, I know you're even been as high as training people for leadership and stuff in the NYPD. Uh, is is that part of the problem here with the too many too many chefs in the kitchen? Maybe. Oh, I think it is, and I think that we'll find that out as we go along. Uh, it's very unlike the New York City Police Department. The New York City Police Department is, is one department with a clear chain of command. You know who's calling, who's giving the orders, and you know who to follow, whose orders to follow. Out there, as you just said, if there's several departments involved, they may have different tactics. They may have different chains of commands. That probably led to the lack of communication and to that whole scenario that played out. It's, it's clearly unlike New York City. New York City is its own animal altogether. I, I, I agree with you 100%. The lack of clear, concise orders with several different departments probably led to that. I mean, Vito, it, 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 Bill's running for mayor, okay? Um, and I feel like, you know, maybe the sentiment among the progressive left is, is uh, you know, defund the police. But I actually, you know, there was a study out that 70% of women in the inner city were against defund the police. So maybe a law and order man like Bill, this might be, might be a time for him to make, to make a push. Well, it's ironic, and unfortunately, that same people who clamored for defund the police were the ones, and there were a lot of people, but they were clearly saying, where were the police during the Capitol Hill uh, siege, right? Uh, so you can't have it both ways. I guess we're highlighting double standard, but I think you're right, John, whether, you know, Bill's approach to and belief that the best thing we can do for city and its, the city and its citizens is to keep the streets safe. And, and there's a growing sentiment, I think, among too many that that's just not the case. And it's not just has to do with gangs and, and, and heinous crimes or, or felonious crimes. Bill, and tell me if you disagree, but it's, now it's become the, those petty things like breaking into your car in the middle of the night or the graffiti. Uh, I just passed uh, locally a new storefront not too far. People invested new money. And within a day, there was graffiti on the, on the front of the building. So just curious, Bill, what your perspective is on that. Well, I agree 100 percent. I mean, that that falls back to the broken windows theory of policing, which I support 100 percent, which Mayor Giuliani and Commissioner Bratton put in place in the mid 90s. If you ignore the low level offenses, it acts as a gateway to more violent crimes. We've seen that play out right in front of our eyes under the de Blasio administration. They've ignored vandalism. They've ignored graffiti. They've ignored fare evasion. All these low level offenses, they've looked the other way and told the police to back off. And what has that led to? A more violent society. Shootings have skyrocketed. Homicides have skyrocketed. If you if you address the low-level crimes, just like you explained, the violent crime will be stopped. We can stop it that way, but that's the only way to do it. Let us hope. All right, Billy, we got to leave it there. Thanks, brother. Uh, we look forward to Thank seeing you. you next week. Keep us posted on anything. Uh, you got any news for us? We're always here for you. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it, gentlemen. Stay safe. All right. Take care, Bill. Vito and I are going to take a quick break right here. We're going to come back with constitutional attorney and law professor uh, Jonathan Adler talk about this whole 25th Amendment stuff right after this.